Greetings folks, here we have the Dynam PBY Catalina flying boat. This is a plane that I have wanted for a long, long time. It's been around for quite a few years and I really wanted this plane because it's a very significant plane from Australia's mar uh, aviation history. The RAAF used it extensively in World War II and even Qantas used it uh, for commercial passenger flights as well. Now when I did finally decide to buy it, uh, I had it had gone out of stock in Hobby King, Banggood, uh, but I did see it for sale in the Australian um, Dynam shop. I'll give you a link to that one. But then it went out of stock. Finally found it in the New Zealand uh, Dynam shop, which is, what's it called? Hobby Station New Zealand. I'll put the link in the description below. So, so finally got my hands on one and I'm very happy. Now, why is this so significant? Uh, this was arguably the most popular the most successful flying boat in aviation history. Uh, and with a quick look on Wikipedia, there were 3,272 of them built. In the Second World War, the RAAF used them as night raiders and mine layers in uh, South Pacific, uh, Southwest Pacific, Papua New Guinea, uh, places like that. Also used it for rescue. This is the rescue version, which is excellent. I like the uh, blue and yellow colour scheme. We also have one of these in the RAF Museum uh, at Point Cook, and we've actually seen it, so it uh, has a lot of significance for me. Now, what does PBY stand for? PB stands for Patrol Bomber, and Y is the code or the letter code for the consolidated aircraft, uh, the people who built this plane. And it was called the Catalina in the US after uh, the Santa Catalina Island in California. I think it's called the Canso in uh, Canada after a town called Canso, but very, very significant for Australian aviation history and uh, Air Force history as well. A couple of my flying buddies have owned this model uh, and uh, dunked it in the water and crashed it and they no longer exist as far as I know. One of them got converted into a slope sawer, which, was, which worked really well. But for me, I want this because of the, the history of the plane itself, not so much for flying off water. We really don't have anywhere to fly off water here. So I'm probably not going to dunk it in the water. Uh, I'll be using it mainly from land. I may even put some landing gear on it, on it too, so uh, I can use it as a, a land-based plane. But uh, very, very happy I've got this one. Let's have a look. Now I am fully aware that this is not a modern uh, you know, super high quality, high spec model. That doesn't worry me at all. I'm mostly after it because of its looks and, and its significance, as I said. I know there are probably going to be some mods that I want to do to strengthen it up and make it a bit more durable. The, the usual Dynam instructions, some cool decals, always love the rescue decals. ESC programming chart there, very important, hang on to them. Here's the fuselage and just look at that unique shape. It really is a boat with a wing on it. Parasol style wing mounting, which basically means the, the, the boat is suspended below the wing on this pedestal here. And real planing boat shape floor on the bottom of the fuselage. Nice big uh, battery bay here. Connections coming through, a couple of servos. They'll be the tail servos there. Here are the outer wing sections, and they have a, a nice, a, a decent depth symmetrical airfoil on them. Servo's already mounted in there. Couple of 8x6x3 by by props, three bladed props. There are the, uh, the wing floats. Looks like a little LED driver there. Do we have LEDs? Little pilot, canopy, canopy glue. Contact glue and bits and pieces. More bits and pieces. Horizontal stabiliser and elevator in two sections. And the big centre wing section with motors already mounted. Twin 1100 kV motors. All the wiring here. So that is a decent airfoil. Look at that. Seems to have a bit of dihedral in it too. I wonder if that's normal or bent I don't know yes we do have LEDs on it there we go all right so this is looking good 
let's get onto it and put it together. It's pretty much all together now. Uh, there are still quite a few little mods and strengthening things I want to do. It looks fantastic, but there are definitely some issues with the, the way the model is made. The motors have these tiny, tiny little motor shafts, uh, and they're quite long too, so it's quite possible the uh, props are going to be very diff or the motors are going to be very difficult to, to balance and, and keep smooth. Uh, the plastic uh, cockpit there, I've just taped that on because I may want to put some FPV gear in the cover there. Uh, it's pretty easy to put together, plenty of space to get your hand in and everything. The wing struts, they sort of have slotted holes here that the screws can slip out of. There's an enormous thread on uh, RC groups about this plane, 500 pages long so far. They go through all the problems that, that people have found with it, but it, it's such a well-loved plane that uh, I think uh, everyone's prepared to put up with the uh, funny little things that they have to do. Uh, so I think we need to put some washers under the screws there to stop the screws pulling through. Get a nice little stand for it, which is uh, the push rods are very, very thin, way too thin. Uh, my model, the two halves were glued together a bit funny, which meant that the uh, rudder was sitting over to one side. So I sort of had to uh, get into this join here, fill it with hot glue and hold the rudder straight so that the tail plane would be um, same angle as the wing. So you can see this piece of wire here, it joins into this little barrel connector there. A bit difficult to push the two halves of the elevator together. It's kind of soft foam and push the wire into that uh, push rod thing over there. Uh, but I got it done eventually. I've had to re-glue these in a bit stronger. Uh, again, the push rod is, is way too flexible. I'm going to need to support that because uh, that could result in lack of up elevator in a dive or a bit of speed. The control horns are quite small and weak and just uh, a couple of prongs going into the foam. So ideally I would pull them out and change them, I think. Same on the aileron as well. Yeah, I really don't trust them. Uh, at least I'm going to sort of surround them with hot glue to spread the load. Wing join, that's going to need some taping or gluing as well. The little water rudder, I don't know what to do about that. I'm really not going to take this in the water often, so I may just clip that off. I don't think I need the water rudder. I think I'd be able to steer with differential steering and, and, and uh, air rudder anyway in the limited water stuff that I'm going to do, probably only on the uh, flooded flying field, I think. And the sort of wing floats, um, they're just going to add drag, I think, so take them on and off as required uh, from taking off from the field or hand launching I'll just leave them off because they're just going to catch on the grass on a landing. Pedestal sort of seems a bit weak to me I feel like putting some carbon fibre rods down through there just to add some more durability. I really want to fly it on a, a 4S 3000 uh, and I think that'll be no problems at all I'll be able to do that. I did a current draw test with a 3S and maximum current was about 16 and a half amps so it's not going to stress the ESCs or the motors at all I don't think. One of the mods suggested on RC Group's thread was to uh, epoxy some little washers just underneath the wing struts like that so that the screws won't slip out of the slots in a hard landing. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm also going to shorten the push rod a little bit because that is just a little bit too long. And extend the cover so that I can glue that to the side of the tail there. Because this is way too flexy. So what I'm going to do is I've got a little bit of PVC plastic here. I've sort of pushed a bit of a slot in there. I'm just going to glue that in there and that will support the push rod, stop it from flexing around so much.
So I've cut out a little bit of foam so that the 4S3000 will fit in there. Uh, and it balances at 65 millimetres back from the leading edge with the battery there. And that would give it a flying weight of... 1440 grams, which is pretty reasonable. So there we are, it's all built, ready to go. Very happy with that. Uh, I think it's strong enough to be durable now. All we need to do is wait for some decent weather and we can take it out for a maiden flight. Thanks for watching.